Hey everybody, Jamie here with the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel with a real treat. Once again, I was able to catch up with Lee Blake. We're here at the Van Build 2018 in Parker, Arizona, and he's been kind enough to come and volunteer his time and expertise doing some solar shop jobs and some electrical and whatnot. And so I thought we would uh, catch up and kind of cover what uh, changes have taken place with his rig, maybe in his life since we last did an interview. This isn't gonna be a uh, bumper to bumper uh, walkthrough of his rig. We have those already and you can see those here at these buttons on the top of your screen. So there's, we're not gonna take a lot of Lee's time with respect to that. But uh, with that said, Thank you very much, Lee, for coming to the van, Bill. My pleasure, dude. You do good stuff. Uh, thank you. And uh, tell us about uh, the last uh, cha you know, the changes that you made since we last uh, caught up with you. Okay. Well, um, since last year, uh, I got some new technology. I bought a fine wire stapler and figured out how to make things a little bit differently. So I rebuilt all the upper cabinets. And in uh, talking about that, uh, the build philosophy I used for this van is sort of an equipment philosophy as opposed to building a cabin inside a van. I looked at the van as a piece of commercial equipment and all of these commercial vans have lots of mounting points mm -hmm. already built into the inside. And so rather than put wood slats and then wood on top of that and then store something on top of that and put wood screws in it, I just use the mounting points in the metal for everything. So everything in here is modular. And my approach was to build equipment, not furniture. I built a module that's the galley module, and it stores galley stuff. I built a module that's the bed module, and it does bed stuff. And everything just bolts in place. So the, when I changed the, the cabinets, I changed the galley cabinet, the overdoor cabinet, and the overbed cabinet. All I did was unbolt the old one, strip the hardware off, and throw nice. it away. I nice. built a new one that fits back in that same place to the same mounting points, but it does more. And uh, the galley cabinet, for example, is 70 inches, it's all one piece, 70 inches wide, 24 inches high, 12 and a half inches deep. It weighs 35 pounds. I picked it up, put it in, and bolted it in there myself. Airplane birch? Uh, birch plywood and uh, birch hardwood. Okay. Uh, I like birch because it's strong and light. It's not quite as strong as oak, but it's a lot lighter. It's not quite as light as pine, but it's a lot stronger. Right. So, you know, birch is a good choice. And so everything in there is built out of quarter inch birch with birch hardwood. And the technology is primarily stapled in glue. There are some places where it's screwed and glued for strength. Mm -hmm. But that whole cabinet weighs 35 pounds. With, with nothing in it, you can take that cabinet and pick it up and put it down and I took it out of the workshop, put it in there and bolted it in place myself. Mind if we get a little bit closer look and... Let's go in. So uh, this, this is the new galley cabinet. The, old, the previous galley cabinet, which was in probably the video you did before, mm -hmm. was came out to about here and it was a single layer all the way across and it didn't hold enough. So what I had to do was I had to take bigger stuff and store it in the front or store it under the bed and when I was doing my galley stuff, I'm running around the van to get stuff. From a process point of view, which is what I think about, that's really inefficient. You, you want to stow it where you use it. You want to put it where you need it. And you want to have everything in one place. And so I, I did a redesign of the galley cabinet so that everything would be in one place. Things that I like, I kept and I expanded on. Things that I didn't like, I changed. Um, these were in the previous one, but there was only one layer. Now there's two, okay? So I doubled the amount of this, because I really like putting stuff in these plastic canisters. canisters. Um, go to the store, buy some granola, uh, put it in your van in a uh, cardboard box, and you're gonna have company. <laughs> Little furry company. Okay, <laughs> right, I know about that company. You know about that. Yes, I do. Because, because the odor goes, and they smell that. These are airtight. Uh, they keep the, they keep it fresh, and being up here, they keep everything out of it. So you can put dry goods up here; they stay fresh, they stay out. Of, they, you don't get company, mm -hmm. and you can see exactly how much you have. So I really like the whole plastic jug thing. So I doubled up on it. Okay. So I have more. Okay. Um, on on, I had stuff that was too tall or too deep, 
So I made a deep section. And now stuff that's deep, like, plastic, like paper plates and plastic plates, and stuff that's tall, like my blender and my popcorn maker and my Toblerone. There you go. And my Ritz crackers. <coughs> stuff that's tall now fits in there. Uh, the door is on a, hid, uh, uh, a lid latch so that if I'm stopped somewhere where I don't have time to level or something like that, it stays open and doesn't flop closed if I'm on a, an incline. Was that new, that hinge? Yeah, That's the new. other ones didn't do that. Okay, and the reason that you put that on is because at one point you were on level and it did swing. And it did that and it made me unhappy. So <laughs> what I'm hearing is once again, build it out, try it, use it, see what you like. Improve it. And if you gotta reach across the way, figure a way to make it all close. Exactly, <laughs> right. that's exactly right. Um, this, this is my little seven inch tablet. It normally lives back here by the bed because I read books on it mm -hmm. and I have a little nightlight app on it and stuff like that and it charges back there. But during the day, I put it up here because I use it as a tea timer and when I eat breakfast, and I'm sitting here eating breakfast, I can, uh, because I, I um, do a hotspot off my phone and I have mm -hmm. a cell amp and stuff like that, uh, I just watch YouTube news and things like that on that while I'm eating breakfast. This countertop's new. I no, this is our. Okay, I don't yeah. remember. This, this is my pull-out table. You remember this, right? Yeah, I remember this. I just computer don't remember storage. the top. Yeah, uh, I computer storage, wire storage, and stuff like that. The laptop's out because I need to remember to charge it, and if I don't leave it out, I won't remember. So, it's out. And and so you know this, I added this because I wanted to be able to put there. I used to have a TV here, but I never used it. Because it yeah, would never get reception or whatever, but I can get data usually more often than I can get TV. Mm. So, uh, and this way, on with YouTube, you can pick what you want to see. And I do that too. So, I basically watch. And YouTube. it does other things too. So it, it serves as my book repository. It serves as my timer. It serves as my clock. It you know. You got rid of your TV. I got rid of the TV. Now you have this. Now I have this, mm. and, and that's what I use. Okay. The lower section still a drop-down door. I like that, so I made it a little bit longer. Uh, put some 3M safety walk on it to keep it from uh, stepping because when I put that on and move it out of the way, you know, I don't want it to slide if I don't want it to slide and I don't want it to... Uh, this is 3M... 3M safety walk. Safety it's walk. Just a, it's just a fairly thick textured vinyl adhesive back. Okay. So the door is quarter inch plywood with birch hardwood, uh, but the surface is covered with the 3M safety walk. For durability and so that things don't slide and i like to drop down doors because what i just showed you you can take things out you can move them out of the way you can get the stuff in the back and and the uh <clears throat> i structured the storage in here the other storage was just open storage if you buy a cabinet you get a box and you modify your process to the box mm -hmm. Okay, I defined my process and built the box to fit my process because I could build it from scratch. So, like here, this is 18 5 ounce uh, waterproof, airproof containers. Uh, some have vitamins, some have spices, some of them have lemonade mix. <laughs> but they all just fit in there and they're out of the way. Thrive. Other Otherwise, yeah, otherwise those things would be spread all over the place, rolling around in a drawer somewhere. There's 18 of these things. Where uh, would somebody get something like this? Oh, I made that. This is just birch plywood with birch. Okay. It's just, you can see, there's just holes, you can see the plywood. Mm -hmm. There's just holes drilled into plywood and a couple of rails on the side. What I did was I made it removable uh, and if you look in here, this is uh, uh, Teflon tape. EDPM tape, okay, so that it slides on EDPM tape with EDPM slides, and it's got a little bit of foam on the side, so that when it's, in, when it's in there, it doesn't run on the paint, it runs on that tape, and there's, gotcha. I mean, you can feel it, it just slides like butter. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, I can't see the Teflon tape, but you can feel but it. if you painted it. No, you can feel it. Oh, okay, so it's clear. Yeah. I use white Teflon tape, so I was, I was just looking for yeah. white Teflon so, tape. So all that, all that is is just, you know, to make it so that it, if you let this slide long enough, it's going to wear the paint out. Put the Teflon tape on there, never happens. Can I ask you a question? Because I know people watching this are going to be wondering this. How do you come up with this stuff? You don't have a background in putting spices on Teflon tape, so... No, but I've, I've been in the van for a while, and I know what makes me unhappy. And, and what happens is I've... 
I focus on what makes me unhappy. Now, if you want to live that way, more power to you. I suffer with it. <laughs> All right. But okay. Um, and and I, I noodle on it until I come up with an idea. And then I take that idea and I flesh it out and I do a design and I put it aside. And then I noodle on it for some more. And I typically come up with a different design. And I'll do two or three, four designs until I've sort of covered sort of the range of very complex to not adequate. And then I'll come up with something that's... When I come up with something that I say, oh yeah, I'm going to build that. Mm -hmm. That's when I build it. This is maybe the sixth idea for this. I, I had all kinds of ideas for this. And I come out with something that's functional, simple, elegant, easy. I mean, how much easier do you get than that? Right? And take it's this, put it in. Very simple. And I'm glad that you're mentioning that you, this is like you tried six, six different times because well, people could watch this and be intimidated. Like, how does this guy come up with it? You're trying things. You try different things. Look, look, this, anybody who's done design knows that you never hit it on the first one. That's why you don't build the first one. You, you do the first one, you flesh it out, you let your brain work on it, and you document it, and you put it away. And then you do another one, and then you do another one. And eventually you come up with the one that picks the best elements that you've come up with, puts them together into one, and that's the one, and you, I always know it. It's like, that's the one I gotta build. And that's the one I build. And six months later, I have a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun for you. <laughs> right, but so these, the separators here, so like, like here, um, if, if I just had a vertical separator in there, the area above this mug would be wasted. Sure. So I put a horizontal separator in there. These separators are actually part of the design, so they make structural integrity. Absolutely. Because this is a big open area. So these things actually provide structural integrity for the whole thing. It's like a honeycomb. Mm -hmm. But they're also, you know, functional. The area above here is where the water kettle and the special tea mugs go. Right. And that area would be wasted if I didn't have that horizontal divide in there. And that's something that just seems obvious, but didn't do it, you know, mm -hmm. in the previous version. So uh, th this whole thing was, was sort of set up so that it's a, it's, it's a piece of equipment that implements my process. Mm -hmm. as opposed to being a box on the wall that I have to adapt for. And the one on that end, open that up. And open it all the way. That's where the pots and pans are stored. But it's also sort of magnetic storage for some other stuff that I use. And, no, you don't have to do that. Just open oh, it up. just close it and it does it? Okay. Yeah. And now, feel, now, actually do that a couple of times and feel the way that feels. Solid, nice, smooth. It's got nice smooth action on it. I can tell that it's sturdy. It's not going to give out soon. Right. Some of the RV manufacturers might want to take a lesson in this. Well, continuous stainless hinges. Now, part of that's because I use I. This is really efficient space utilization. With a with a standard hinge, you need a lot of. This is a standard hinge. You need a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. With a continuous hinge. You don't need very much space because it's on this side and on that side. This is right up against it. There's only enough space there to open this. And so, and also with the stainless hinge, it's never going to go anywhere. It's always going to be there. It's not going to break. And with this, it stays open even if you're not quite level. And it feels good. Yeah, it does. And uh, the catches, uh, these are embedded cup magnets. Okay. That, are, that are embedded down into the this birch rail and the handle the, the screws that hold the handle on uh, are reinforced on the inside with these magnetic steel washers and so the magnetic steel washers are lined up with the cup magnets and that's if I feel that please you have to pull it don't you yeah it's not going to come off on a but, washed but, road but you can do this and use your thumb, mm -hmm. and you don't have to be pulling on it. You just pop it open, and it stays, and then you close it, and it's solid. 
I tend to go on some bumpy roads now and then, so there's also a catch so that if it comes open it won't drop. Nice. And then I redid this one. Um, this one, uh, the overdoor cabinet. So this is the side door screen because I have a screen that goes on the side door store mm -hmm. where you use it. Um, uh, this is there's a curtain in there that I can uh, snap on there if I don't want to put the window coverings on and they just want to pull in real quick and put a uh, curtain across there then I have privacy in the back that's stored here so the, the philosophy of store it where you use it um, this is the quilt this is the pillow this is the bed if you can if you can do something standing in one place in a, in a vehicle like this that's a good thing I also did, redid this cabinet it was uh, not as deep and not as uh, uh, high. I switched the mounting so that the mounting's inside instead of outside. Here, the, it bolts on the outside, and so this is above the bolts. And I did that because I, I need visibility. You know, so this thing only comes down. This is very personalized. I can stand here and easily see the back of the counter. Mm -hmm. That's why this is how high it is. Okay, because <laughs> it's for me. Okay. Uh, this, I wanted to have enough room under here that I didn't feel like I was sleeping in a submarine bunk. Sure. But I also wanted more storage. So I redid this whole thing. It still has the drop-down doors, but uh, over the previous one, the previous one, I had this much stuff in it. Now I have a whole fourth section of stuff that I used to stick places. Mm -hmm. Now they're all in there. And it's still, I can still sit here easily, and when I'm on the, when I'm on the bed, I can still look up and see the ceiling, so I'm not feeling like I'm, you know, in a submarine bunk. Sure. And, but it, but it does the same thing. I like the idea of having the bedding uh, open so that it can breathe. Yes, we talked about that last time. Right. And uh, and the uh, the paracord uh, holding is just instead of having them come from the inside, I have them come from the outside. So I picked another three quarters of an inch. That nice. seems like an obvious thing. It was a real revelation to me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I, I use a cowboy shower because there's no room for a shower inside the van. If I had another 24 inches, I'd have an inside shower. So I my water heater is obviously plumbed uh, to the system. My shower is really just a handheld shower that sits back here. And when it's not being used, it's just attached there and it's out of the way and it doesn't do any good. This is where the furnace is. Uh, I, I use a Propex, HS, a Propex HS2211 um, propane fired furnace. Okay. And it's just this really compact little unit that sits literally in that much space. And this is a filter grill. This is a filter grill that just pops off. Anyway, it pops off. You can change the filter. Mm -hmm. This is the air intake and this is the air output. It takes cold air in here, pushes out hot air here. And the combustion cycle is separate. So there's an air intake under here, and the uh, combustion exhaust is over on the side. So okay. you, it's like your furnace. You know, it's yes. between the heater and the furnace, right? Um, so you can run this, and you don't get any combustion products inside the, the van. The reason I mentioned the furnace is because it's applicable to the shower, OK? Because the furnace, the output for the furnace has this vent that swivels. And so I can direct the airflow. And normally the airflow is sort of going in that way to heat the van. I built this uh, awning. This is, I did have this at the last van built. It just wasn't set up at the time we, we uh, caught you on right. camera, that's right. all. So this rear awning uh, I built because it's, like right now, we've got the doors open. Um, there's nice airflow through, it makes the van feel bigger, but the sun's not beating into the truck because this comes down far enough. And this white panel makes a nice diffuse light into the truck. And you notice there's a zipper yes. sewn on this lower edge. And that's because on this door is stored the container in which I have the side panels. And the side panels have zippers on them and they zip to, to this, to the lower edge of this, and they go all the way down to the ground. And they, um, there's supports on the side that they link to. So the side panels make a completely enclosed, windproof, private enclosure back here. This wide, 
that long. And with the, the, the ground cloth down here, this becomes my enclosed shower. And the shower just pops off of here and hooks on there. And this becomes my shower then, which also can be, you know, handheld sure. and stuff. And if it's a little brisk outside, I turn the furnace on, I turn this vent so it's pointed backwards, and I have a heated shower. There you go. So I've showered in pretty cold weather. I'm not saying it's wonderful, but it's easily survivable. Well, you've got warm water, you've got a got furnace water on you, you've got, hot, you've got hot something air. to block the wind, so it's something you can get through. Yep. Yep. Well thought now, out. It's not as easy as something internal, mm -hmm. you know, where you just go in and have it. But, you know, the NV, great vehicle. I bought it because it tows 9,500 pounds. But it's probably the smallest of all of them. Because it's the, like the uh, ProMaster that Kelvin uses. Mm -hmm. It's wider and a little longer. You can get longer variants. Like I said, if I had another 24 inches in length, I'd have an inside shot. But I don't. So I have an outside shot. And you're not really in cold climates for any length of time anyway, as far as your plan no, for where you and, go. And most of the time, I mean, I wash up every day. I just don't take a shower every day. Sure. Uh, for centuries, we took basin baths. We put hot water in basins and we washed up using that. That's what I do. I put hot water in, in my sink and a little bit of lemon for an astringent into the water. And that's what I wash up with. I wash up every night before I go to bed when I change into my jammies. <laughs> And, uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm washing up every day. I just don't take a shower every day. Uh, the showers are really nice there, but they use a lot of water. And, and uh, that kind of, I might have mentioned this before, I might not have. Uh, my design philosophy for the van was, uh, step back for a second. When you decide to do a van conversion, uh, the most important thing is to figure out Hey, buddy, how you doing? Um, most important thing to figure out is what are you going to use it for? At the very basic level, a van is a place to sleep because we all get unconscious at night and you want to be safe, secure, warm, comfortable. So number one, a safe, secure, warm, comfortable place to sleep. Number two, a place to carry your stuff. After that, it depends on what you want to do. If you're in the city the whole time and you have access to a health club and showers every day, you don't really don't need to put that stuff in the van. If you have uh, access to a grocery store every day when you're driving by, how much food storage do you really need? You don't. So you only internalize things that you don't have access to externally. My design philosophy for the van was I wanted to be able to go out fifth, for 14 days on BLM land, unsupported, with only what I had on board. So I have to, had to carry 14 days worth of everything. Turns out I can go 21 days. Okay. So as, as we're looking at this, it's important to recognize that my build requirements were for that unsupported long duration stay. As opposed to if you're gonna be in a city all the time, you don't need any of this. You, may, you might do it anyway, but you don't need it. I go out for long periods of time by myself and I can stay, at this point, 21 days. Now, clearly after 21 days, I don't have fresh fruit anymore. Right. But I have frozen fruit. You have frozen fruit, I was just gonna say, <laughs> yes. Because I have a refrigerator and a freezer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the 21st day is not the same as the first day, but it's still okay. You know, I'm not suffering or anything like that. Uh, so the, the philosophy here was, uh, long-term unsupported and that doesn't necessarily apply to everyone mm -hmm. but that's important to know when you're launching into your build what is it that you want it to do and that gets back to what do you want to do how do you want to do it so one what are you doing now and how are you doing it what do you want to do and how do you want to do it and if there's a gap that's a design opportunity great advice that's a thing to be unhappy about <laughs> How, speaking of unhappy, we, we've had this now for what, three years, four years, the van? This is 2012. Okay, so you've had it for quite a while. Yeah. You, I know that there's been several iterations throughout that time. Uh, last How one was unhappy last... are you with it now? Oh, absolutely. 
uh, because I still told the third, I still have an intention. I'm still working on it. I have a 30 foot trailer that I bought. It's mm -hmm. a bunkhouse model. I'm converting it into my mobile workshop. Everything that I used to build this van will be in my trailer with me. The trailer was built to take a family of you know six out for a week. I've converted it. I put a boatload of solar on the top, a boatload of store, uh, batteries. I got a 3000 watt Magnum hybrid inverter in there, 2000 watt generator, uh, a 60 amp uh, solar controller with a programmable charge profile so I can optimize it. Uh, and, and the bunkhouse, bunks are gone. That's now storage for tools and parts. The fold-out sofa is gone. That's now a computer workstation. And that's going to be my mobile design and fabrication place. And since I'm still intending to tow that, then this is still my vehicle of choice because this will tow 9,500 pounds. Wow. It's got a 950 pound tongue weight, 9,500 9, pound tow. With that as a requirement, this is still my choice. And this layout is basically my, my choice of layout. I have a 30 by 80 half queen, uh, eight and a half inch thick, five layer mattress. <laughs> How tall are you? Six four. Okay. And I can lay on my back and stretch out and be comfortable. Uh, and and because it's half queen, I can buy fitted sheets for it. Right. Standard size, standard people, standard size mattresses. I'll say it again: standard size mattresses. Buy fitted sheets. Buy standard sheets. Okay. Uh, if you can't do that, okay, fine, don't. But just as a suggestion. Uh, so the general layout, you know, long bed on the side. This whole wall, utilities and function. Yeah, I would do, I would, I, I'd change a few things in the front, but I'd still choose this vehicle. Now, if I wasn't towing anything, if I was going to live in the van, like I said, if I had 24 more inches, I'd have an inside shower. Sure. An inside shower is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would, I might go and keep in mind, this is 2012. This was the first year that Nissan came out with this vehicle. Up until 2012, the only option for a high roof van you had was a Sprinter. Right. Now you've got Sprinter, uh, NV, Promaster, Transit. Okay, so uh, Kelvin, we just talked to, has decided on the Promaster. He has a lot more room, not more width inside mm -hmm. than this does, and you can get that in a longer variant. So if I wasn't towing anything, and he gets better mileage than I do. Okay. Uh, I have the 300. What is this, 371 horsepower? 5.8 liter regular gas V8. Drive this thing up the Washington Monument while it's slurping gas. Right. Uh, so the Promaster, I, I'm, I'm not promoting anything here, but the Promaster gets better mileage, gets wider, you can get in a longer variant. I would have to consider that if I wasn't towing anything. Okay. Because the more room you have, if you're efficient, the more stuff you can do. I could put everything that's in here plus a shower and more stowage and that would be nice you know to take a shower i gotta be somewhere where i can do all this and i've actually done it in a parking lot because it's completely private right you know mm -hmm. so sure it's you know, it's okay under the right circumstances in the right parking lot why not yeah and you get behind a walmart when nobody's at and you you face the truck back you could sit right on top of so this you, drain so, so you're you're right up against the hedges that they have behind the, mm -hmm. the store and you put this thing up and you take a shower. No problem. But instead of just walking in, taking a shower and walking out, you have to, you know, do the setup. So it would be nice to have all that stuff inside. And if I had a bigger van, longer van, wider van, I would do that. But I'm towing. So this sure. is still it. Sure. I know that I always feel like it's a special treat when we connect and you're willing to give us some time. And so this is the ter third time we've spoken like this. Suppose we aren't able to catch up next year at the van build. You're busy doing other things. Maybe you're even out of the country. Is there anything that you would like to say before we wrap this up and then I'll go ahead and wrap it up? Um, 
Yeah, well, I've talked to a number of people. A uh, number, of, by the way, thank you to everyone who's viewed the videos before that Jamie posted, and has contacted me and expressed their appreciation for what they learned and what they saw. Uh, I really appreciate uh, everybody doing that, and I appreciate all the messages. Uh, I'm one guy, and I can only do so much. And my passion is designing and building. So, if I haven't answered everybody, it's not personal. It's just that I, if if Usually, if I get a specific an uh, specific question, what did you do on your side door? That gets an answer immediately. If I get a question, what's the best van for me? I, I can't even answer that. I don't know you. I don't right. know what you want to do with it. So I can't even answer that. Uh, but I want to start by uh, expressing my appreciation for everybody who's, who's viewed the videos. And I've talked to a number of people here who have talked to me about the videos. And I've asked them what was helpful to them. And the answers all kind of revolve around the idea of efficiency, order, organization, um, design, and uh, they've been kind of inspired to maybe look at things a little differently. Uh, that would be my, my best hope for this, is that we talk about stow it where you use it. Um, design it for your process, as opposed to just put something there and adapt to it. When you do something, figure out where the pinch points are. Figure out where the unhappy points are and change it so that it's a happy point instead of an unhappy point. Because the whole reason here is to be comfortable and happy and enjoy it. Uh, I, when I, I, I help people all the time back where I live, I spend a day or two a week helping people with their vans and stuff. And the best thing is that when somebody pulls in, when they leave, their life is a little bit better. And that's the whole idea here. So you can do that yourself. Obviously, if you, if you need the help like people here, people come out of here, and again, Jamie, I really appreciate what you do here. Uh, people come here and when they leave, they're better off. Their whole life is better off. And that's, that's good stuff. Sorry. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And, and I know that Lee is being very kind in his comments about your comments. I want to reiterate something. He gets a lot, you see what he's doing. You see how he is and how smart he is and, and how brilliant his build is. Let's respect Lee and not ask him questions in the comments. If you guys want to exchange conversations in the comments, I'll leave the comments open on this. I don't want to have to disable comments, but let's give Lee his peace and let's be thankful for the time that he does give us. With that, thanks for watching. Uh, go back and check out his other videos and we'll see you again soon with another upload. Thanks a lot.